Hi, this is Homai from Spitfire Audio, and we have a new collection. Pina Toprak shared with us her favorite three libraries that she keeps going back to. Uh, they are Eric Whitaker Choir, Kepler Orchestra, and the Spitfire Harp. So we bundled them up for you, which are available as a collection during the summer sale. I want to show you what they can sound like together and just give you a brief overview of what you can find in those three libraries. Let's have a listen first and then just a brief look at the libraries themselves. All right, let's have a look at the Eric Whitaker Library because that's the one I started with. What you have in here are these really beautiful humming sounds. It's 22 people, by the way, that have been recorded at Air Lunta Studios with Eric in the room himself and just directing each individual note with the singers. You get these absolutely beautiful tones in here. Also using the expression and the dynamics just to give it this natural crescendo and diminuendo. But you also have actually recorded dynamic swells in here and lots of other articulations. If you do want to go in and dive in and just really get to know this library, there's some great walkthroughs by Paul. But I want to just quickly show you what I've used within here. So I'm moving on from the humming that I start off with and move over to these open vowels. One other technique that I do want to show you within here is the legato ones. We've actually recorded the singer going from one note into the next, and it's called melisma, and it just gives you this sort of natural transition. So it's this little slide into the next note. Something else I haven't used within this piece but it's worth knowing about is the Evo grid that we have within here. So we have these evolutions of the choir in this grid format as well. And you can actually decide what sort of style you want to have these evolutions in. So you have clashes, special, episodic, rhythmic. So let's try just out the rhythmic ones. Here's some episodic. Mm -hmm. 
And obviously you can have a mix and match between all these different styles and techniques within here. The next library I used for this was the Spitfire Harp, also recorded at air, and you get all these different articulations between the Bispigliando. You have your normale here. Then also, for example, flageolets. Really beautiful tone. And also some effects. Again, another thing that I think is worth knowing about, but I haven't used within here, is that you have the option of actually using glissandi. So you have a mixture of whole tone scales, minor harmonic, minor melodic, major, pentatonic, and also diminished. It then also gives you the option whether it's going up or down, so you can change the direction. And the speed of this too. So it's just a little bit slower, for example. For this one, I've used the bisplegiando, just layering it up with the choir. Another feature that's really cool within the harp is that you get these warped sounds. So we've taken the recordings of the harp and just put them through different plugins and different effects units and turn them into synth sounds. Here, for example, you can find another folder that is called Harposphere and within here you've got quite a few different patches. You can hear that the bisplegiando has been used, so I've just layered it with the actual recording. And it just instantly gave it a lot more depth. And lastly, we have the Kepler library here. It has been very much influenced by John Adams and Steve Reich and Philip Glass in terms of system music and repetitive notes. So this is what we went in and recorded and it comes in this grid-like GUI and all these different subdivisions that you can find here. So you've got half notes, quarter notes, eighth notes, sixteenths and so on, creating this different pattern. So let me play you the string section, for example. We recorded the reboing so you get a natural feel. And something that's really fun within this library also is that you can build on the rhythm. So, for example, if I was going to Use the cellis down here. And that's only using one of the subdivisions. You can, of course, mix and match everything within here as well and give you all these different polyrhythms. Again, there's some really great walkthroughs to give you a lot more detail as to how this can work. But what you can find in here is a high string sections, celli, high brass, low brass, basses, woodwinds. And then very similar to the harp, we have also warped sounds in here. So you can also get synthesized sounds from the actual recordings of the orchestra. Again, because the source sound is the orchestra, it just blends really nicely. If I go back actually to the beginning, I've layered a couple more of these synthesized sounds in there.
I'll just solo out this as well for you. One other patch that I absolutely love within the Kepler Orchestra is called the Doppler Grid. Let me just play that back to you. This one is also pulsing, but you also have a non-pulsing patch within that too. You also find them across the orchestra as well, so you can actually use that on different instruments. I think Kepler is also a great tool to give you a little bit of movement in your piece. For example, halfway through here, I just needed something that comes in and just accelerate what I had already written. So I've got the brass and the woodwinds coming in in a sort of pulsing fashion. So that also just coupled with a crescendo. So again, just using the expression and the dynamics to just give it a bit of a, a bit of a moment. Again, just a quick look what you can find in these three libraries and what that could sound like together. These are only going to be as a collection during the summer sale. I hope this was helpful though. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully see you in the next one.